Hello, you are here in Anu's classroom and we are discussing on information systems for managers. And in this video, we will be talking about computer systems and smart devices. By the end of this video, you, I hope that you will be able to understand or learn about what are the components of a computer, what a central processing unit is, what are storage devices, input output devices, which we nickname them as IO devices, networking devices, plug and play devices, smart devices, asynchronous and synchronous communication and various other types of computers. Now, looking at these terms, don't worry, okay, these are not big jargons and stuff that is difficult to understand, especially if you're coming from an arts background and all, you look at these terms and you might find it quite confusing, okay. If you are from a B.Tech background or a BCA, MCA or um, any place that is related with computers or even commerce which has IT in it, you guys will find it as a cakewalk and uh, you can even skip this video. But uh, those of you who are not familiar with these or you want to brush up, uh, stick with me. These are not very um, difficult terms or difficult concepts. These are things that we have all come across, we have all used, we have all known also. It's just that maybe you, uh, we have not, uh, we did not, we were not able to link the meaning with the word or things like that, right? So let's get started. So, first of all, what makes us, what makes up our human body? We have the eyes, nose, ears, mouth, all these things, like our five senses, which is kind of like uh, the input, right? You see with your eyes, you feel with your skin, you hear with your uh, ears, you smell with your nose, and you taste with your tongue. And that is the only uh, thing which can act as both input and output because you can speak with your tongue also, right? So all the input, right, goes to our brain, which is uh, the processing and storage unit. So the way in which these uh, inputs get communicated to our processing and storage unit, that is our brain, is through the nerves or the blood cells and things like that, right? And then once the processing and storage has been completed, once the processing has been completed, if there is anything to be given out, that is the output, then it, if it is a speech, then we do that. If it is an action, then we do that. It, if it might be cycling or it might be even slapping a person, right? We don't know. So that is what makes up a human body. Now, humans always have been fascinated by gods and always have loved to play god so what would a human do when he must have made a computer is try to mimic whatever is happening in the human body externally right so all this input all the processing and storage all this communication all this outputting all these things he has made or she has made humans have made into tried to do that using um, the metals and stuff like that that is available to him in this world all right so that is computer so what makes up a computer now you will be easily able to understand you have input devices which could be your keyboard your touch screens your mouse right which will go to a cpu okay the cpu will process for storage we have storage devices it could be your hard disk your ram your rom your usb your external hard disk your google drive all these things have storage now for communication, there are you might have seen all those different cables, colorful cables that go hither and thither uh, from your power socket to your uh, computer, inside your computer also, from your monitor to your speaker, uh, sorry, from your um, CPU to your speaker, uh, CPU to your uh, keyboard or um, external monitors and st stuff like that, all those cables and internally we call them buses. And then you have output devices, it could be your speaker, it could be your monitor, it could be anything like that, wherever you can see an output, it could be your printer, um, things like that, scanner is input, printer is output, okay. So simple, now you have, uh, just think about yourself, your human body, and think about what uh, is it, uh, uh, the external computing stuff that uh, is trying to mimic that, that is what makes the computer, simple enough. So the central processing unit. Uh, since this has uh, this is nicknamed the brain of the computer and this thing uh, has this big job of trying to mimic our brain also so um, it has a little bit more I mean it, this is a, has a little bit more number of units or functions to be done so it, it acts as a control unit to control all the other devices right just like how our brain controls our hand our fingers our uh, eyes and everything uh, the CPU also acts as a control unit. It has its own storage also. A little small storage is there. Okay. We call them as registers. The large data gets stored outside in the external storage devices. But inside, like for example, if I have to add 1 plus 2, 
somewhere intermediate i have to store right small small bits of data small small things like um what you can say the immediate past or uh, just next what it has to do like that small small storage uh, uh, what you can say requirements get fulfilled by the storage which we call it as registers which are inbuilt into the cpu then we have the arithmetic and logical unit which acts as your left and right brain functions okay uh, i don't remember which one was uh, which side of your brain is for arithmetic and which side was for logic and all and or creativity maybe it is left or right one of them okay so that kind of a unit is also there which will help the cpu that is the central processing unit to um, successfully complete these arithmetic uh, or logical requirements so that is the division of the central processing unit then you have storage devices right where uh, it could be your floppy it could be your ram rom uh, floppy is a thing of the past it was when i was in school we used to use floppies at that time um, quickly it became cds and all at that time but at that uh, but uh, economically since i was a middle class person floppies even floppies were a little bit above our um, affordability at that time to be honest okay so we have a lot many storage devices you might you can think of many starting from your usb sticks or your hard disk then you have a concept called ram which is volatile memory okay and we have rom which is uh, not volatile so ram uh, whatever things like whatever tabs you have open in your desktop they get stored in the ram and once you shut down your pc almost all of it goes right once you open restart your pc the things that go right and your pc starts afresh those things were stored in your volatile memory that is why it went then you have non volatile memory so how these things actually work is using uh, transistors resistors capacitors and things like that uh, you know uh, vlsi devices and things solid state devices and all that is far 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 uh, beyond the cons uh, scope of information systems for managers okay you don't have to worry about which capacitor is used or which resistor is used but uh, people from btech background would uh, definitely understand how this memory is volatile and non volatile and such people need not even look into this video also because they might know already this will be this subject itself will be a cake walk for them then yeah so as we were saying main memory we have ram and rom okay ram is random access memory rom is read only memory we have sd ram and dram same way we have in rom we have ep rom and p rom okay so dram is dynamic random access memory and sd ram is synchronous dynamic random access memory so dram or this dynamic random access memory is the most common kind of ram and uh, the data is stored in the cell of transistors and capacitors and this data has to be refreshed every few milliseconds also then also we have sram which is static random access memory which does not require a periodic refresh it is faster than dram but it is more expensive then we have synchronous uh, dram which is used mainly used these days okay which has uh, in fact it has uh, even double the capacity of our uh, drams then we have read only memory okay that is uh, non volatile contents will not be lost when the power is switched off okay so that is where your boot programs and things like that will get stored so that it will not be lost any time uh, due to any failure and if your boot is gone then most probably they'll say that your rom uh, hard disk has to be changed means it is your rom needs to be changed okay there, there we have programmable read only memory that is prom and then we have eprom okay which is erasable programmable read only memory so this eprom can be erased and programmed multiple times whereas prom can only be programmed once so that is the main memory then we have secondary memory also okay um secondary memory is your uh, um, external hard disks and the cds and things like that then coming to input output devices input devices could be your keying devices like your keyboards and all cameras barcode scanners pointing devices voice recognizers all those things are examples of input devices output devices could be your monitors printers audio devices video devices projectors external monitors things like that so what exactly is networking networking is a group of computers printers or other devices which are connected together with or without cables earlier it used to be with cables but then after the advent of wifi and things like that now networks are even without cables users can exchange data across these connected devices and each device in this particular network will be called a node or point okay we call them a node okay um, you can think of them as points we can arrange these so called nodes or points that is computers in um, various ways okay 
so think of it as your column or rangoli dots right you if you are from tamil nadu definitely you will know or if you are from the north also you will know people uh, girls we first put many many dots and then we so those dots are uh, representative of many many computers then we link those dots through uh, lines they are your connections and once you link them up it becomes your network that's it simple easy networks are named according to how these nodes are arranged within it and how they are connected devices that help connect these nodes okay are called networking devices so it's not just only cables you will find out later that it's not just um, cables are not just enough what if uh, i have only one printer and i need five people to share we will also require a router and things like that so a quick reminder um, in case you have not yet subscribed please subscribe and hit the notification icon if you are liking this video give me a thumbs up if you don't then give me a thumbs down and all these things will help me serve people like you better so coming back to networking as we said earlier the way in which how the nodes get connected is uh, what determines what your network will be called and that is called as network topology okay network topology is nothing but a reference to how our network is wired together so if i am connecting it like this then it is it looks like a ring it is called a ring topology this is reminiscent of a star so it is called a star topology we can combine these uh, okay we'll come to the hybrid one a little later if it is like this okay in a linear fashion it is called a bus and if it is branching out like this it is called a tree now if you combine any one i mean more than one of these topologies we call it a hybrid topology usually our networks are hybrid it's rarely just one most often you might find it uh, find star or trees or buses but mostly um, it will be hybrid topology as we said right the computers within the network that is the nodes are connected uh, with each other with networking devices right so what are these networking devices so there are a few networking devices like routers we have hubs and switches interface cards you might have come across these names one time or the other maybe you remember it maybe you don't but definitely if you have a computer a laptop which is connected to the internet uh, using some service provider like uh, kerala vision or asianet or um, i don't know there are airtel right a lot of them are there then um, definitely you might have come across these words so every network has a router okay so that is the device which connects two or more networks okay if you want to connect say a network a to network b you have a router okay and it determines the next point to which a packet of data should be forwarded towards its destination so any communication that you send from your computer to another computer that communication is moves through the network in the form of many packets okay so an email will be split into multiple packets and each packet will be sent that is why you might have noticed pages load half of the pages might load if your net, uh, network is slow half your page will load half of it won't load that is because the content which came only those many packets came remaining packets are stuck block traffic block hasn't come yet okay you can think like that so this packet is the smallest unit of data which travels on the network then you have hubs and switches which are center points where several network connections converge okay so they are the points where data comes in from one or more directions or location and will be forwarded to one or more locations or directions as well so it is like your uh, junctions you can think of them as junctions and your traffic lights sometimes the same devices may serve both as a switch and a router as well then we have an nic or a network interface card which is a card installed on a computer which will help it connect to the network it is what provides a dedicated and full time connection to our computers now coming to plug and play devices you might have definitely used at least one plug and play device in your life if you haven't then you might be sitting under a rock i would say plug and play short form as pnp is first introduced as a part of windows which enabled a computer system to adapt to hardware changes with minimal intervention by the user think of it earlier times i don't know whether you might uh, remember earlier times if we had to connect one hard drive uh, some any uh, external device we had to uh, download its driver into our computer and then only we'll be able to use it but nowadays it's not like that you buy a um, what you can say you buy a mouse or you buy anything okay any kind of a uh, external thing you plug it it automatically downloads the user and you can start using it you don't have to do anything else be it even your printers you plug it and uh, if any uh, software is required 
uh, mandatory uh, once you plug it your system uh, will automatically detect that a new system has been plugged it will download the required softwares for it and it will uh, i mean it will be uh, set up ready for you to use right so that is plug and play that is all that is about plug and play and windows was the first uh, it seems windows uh, initially launched as plug and play but nowadays i guess everybody has this plug and play so a user can add or remove devices without having to do any manual configuration and without any knowledge of the computer hardware also all the user has to do is plug the device into a free computer port and usb is the industry standard for attaching peripheral devices to the computer this technology is designed for use with almost all devices including printers digital cameras game pads joysticks keyboards mouse tv storage devices everything and anything right everything comes with a usb you all know about usb right usb is an acronym for universal serial bus it is a cable it is a kind of cable or a bus which helps in the communication part you remember the same thing whatever nerves and blood cells are doing that is what usb is doing for your computer so coming to smart devices smart devices are or of the everyday objects which are made intelligent with advanced computing and in including ai and machine learning and network to form the internet of things smart switches smart watches uh, ai enabled uh, smart washing machines echo amazon's echo fire tv stick even fans of atomberg and things like that all hmm? made smart they are interactive electronic gadgets which help uh, that help uh, understand simple commands which are sent by users and help in daily activities some of the most commonly used smart devices include your smartphones your tablets tablets smart watches smart glasses and other personal electronics so now you know smart devices they are also part of our information system coming to current communication technology we all know how important communication is and what communication is also because we have all studied mmpc7 communication systems right communication is the transmission of a signal by a way of particular medium from a sender to a receiver like for example in human speech i i am uh, transmitting a signal through a transmission medium okay that is through right now through internet and it is hitting you the receiver you are hearing me for the effective communication both sender and receiver should understand the signals and have a common interpretation for them if i say apple and you think orange then communication will fail if i am speaking english and you do not know english communication is bound to fail when communication has to be established um, then we need a medium for that transmission this pathway or this medium is called as the communication media and in when we talk about communication computer systems this communication media could be uh, cables many many different cables like optic cables fiber optic cables twisted cable coaxial cable and things like that or it could be microwave transmission satellite transmission wifi transmission infrared transmission bluetooth bluetooth transmission all these things are communication media so there are mainly two different modes of communication synchronous and asynchronous in synchronous data bits are sent over a communication link and the data transfer is controlled by a timing signal which is initiated by the sending device so each data block or packet will be preceded by unique characters which are called sync bits okay and the receiving device will synchronize itself with a stream of these bits synchronous transmission is generally used for transmitting large volume of data at very high speed you, so you think of it it's like uh, you uh, will clock so you remember the morse code and uh, things like that right sometimes you might uh, when you guys may, might have been playing okay in your childhood uh, uh, some people would be there to keep a lookout for your elders if they are coming then you'll give a particular signal at a particular frequency like maybe three rings of your phone okay three uh, ring miss call means that it is something it means something two rings means it means something things like that we have all done right so those kind of things are reminiscent of your synchronous communication where the communication is timed actually so it's like three rings at these many intervals means this or something else means like the church bell okay if it is rung in a particular frequency then you might think of uh, it might communicate some meaning to you so those are examples of synchronous communication which is synchronous because it is timed okay then we have asynchronous communication where one character will be transmitted or received at a time so you send one packet after some amount of time you might send another packet right so each character may be preceded by a start bit and ended with an end bit so you get one uh, packet 
and then after some time you will get one more packet so think of it as like your ignos book distribution okay material distribution you might get one uh, um, on one fine day you might get uh, receive a set of three books and then maybe the next month you might receive the next set of books so how do we know about it how do we know how can we link both those sets of books to igno because uh, because of uh, what you can say because it has been originated from igno because uh, you have enrolled for igno and because there are seven books and you only got three so you're bound to get four more so with all those things right so that is how asynchronous communication works it is not timed but it is rather sequenced using some other ways so naturally it is inefficient because of this overhead okay and it is generally used for low speed data transmission uh, coming to the directions of data communication we all know about radios tvs then telephones and things like that right uh, and walkie talkies that uh, police officers use so a simplex communication is a, a type of communication where data transmission takes place only in one direction like the radios and televisions half duplex is a transmission which takes place in both directions but only in one direction at a time like you might have heard right uh, command to control over over and then yeah control to command right so they uh, they say that you're starting the communication and then they end once the communication is over they say over and once the receiver hears the word over and if he has to say send something then he says start right so like walkie talkies they are half duplex then you have full duplex where both directions we can communicate simultaneously think of our telephones right you say, I say, we all can say together. Then coming to types of communicate computers, we have mainframe computers, we have mini computers, we have workstations, personal computers, which is what most of us be using, network computers as well. So these are a few types of computers. Mainframes are generally used for large scale processing, like your banks and things, SBI, um, big banks, they might be using mainframes. Okay, they are servers which which can hold high amount of data and process large amounts of data as well. Workstations are their personal computers we all know. Network computers are for networking naturally. So that was it for this video. I hope you understood about communication systems and smart devices. Hope you where I was able to break the ice to you. And I hope to see you all in the next video as well. Bye bye.